Welcome my beautiful people to this week in review. I want to right off the bat apologize about the sound. We we're in our new reception area for uh, bread and breakfast in Georgia and it's still not completely done, hence why my back wall is not finished. Um, and I forgot my mic back in Miami. So hopefully the sound isn't too bad and I'm going to try to make this video quick, although I always say the same thing. So let me get right in with questions. And this question, this question comes from my Instagram and it's from uh, Diana. She writes, Fernando, what, can you give me suggestions on how to better communicate with my guests because we're struggling with guest communication? Okay, so I, I'm gonna attack this question, this question in two ways. Number one, I'm gonna attack it in the sense that I'm assuming you probably don't have uh, good automation for your guest communication. So that's gonna be step number one. Step number one is to make sure that you use either AI or some automa uh, uh, automated messaging uh, system within your, either your PMS system if you have it. If you don't have it and you're a uh, single property operator, then, and you're using Airbnb, Airbnb does have an automatic message system, uh, but again, you're limited to only one channel, and if you follow this channel, you know, that's not the way to go. You do not want to limit yourself uh, to just one channel. So, having a PMS system that does the automation for you, and or adding AI to add to your, your guest questions. So that's step number one. Then step number two is uh, once you re reach or get that guest communication, what do you do with that, right? So I'm going to give you a list of seven things that I wrote down that you should focus on. And as I mentioned before, to provide quality, you know, guest communication, just like in relationships, just like anything in life, having good communication is going to be key uh, for a key to not only be successful in, in your short-term rental business, but it's going to be key for guest satisfaction, right? And I guess communication starts even before they come to stay in your property. It starts with the inquiry. So setting the tone right off the bat when you re reach or receive an inquiry, if, if it's an inquiry, Setting the tone is going to be extremely important right off the bat. So the moment you get that first either inquiry or that first message from an instant book, then uh, you should set that, scope, that tone uh, for the rest of your communication with that particular guest, right? So, you know, what's important here is is that you respond in a timely manner, right? Uh, so once that communication comes in, it's ideal that you respond as quickly as possible, but definitely you should be responding in under 15 minutes or less, especially if it's an inquiry. An inquiry, when someone asks a question about possibly booking your property, they're also asking other hosts and most of the time when it comes to sales is the first to reach out is the one that most likely is going to close that deal. So the quicker you reach out, the better. Hence why it's important that you have uh, some type of automation because again, we're, we can't be on the phone and in our, or on our computer 24 seven. So when an inquiry comes in, if you have an automatic message, you could, that message can reply and say, hey, we received your message and we'll, be, we'll get back to you shortly. That puts you front of mind, right? Uh, and that gives you the leg up for those that don't have uh, automatic messaging. So responding to messages in a timely manner is, is extremely important. Next is anticipating the needs of the guests. I said this before, Understanding your avatar is important, but if you have a company like ours in which we have such a diverse group of properties, to have a specific avatar is difficult. But you can you can be you can uh, uh, narrow that down per property.
property, right? You can have a specific avatar per property and then have, and, and when you receive an inquiry for that particular property, it makes it easier for you to understand the needs of that guest. But understanding the needs of the guest is important. As a short-term rental operator, it is very important if, it, uh, especially, I mean, oh, it's, let me backtrack that. Understanding the, uh, the needs of a guest for short-term rental operators sometimes is difficult because we oftentimes are getting people for the first time. But if it's a returning guest, you should know and have a good understanding of what this particular guest needs and wants and likes. So it makes it easier to respond and cater to that guest. Next is to, and it's common sense, you need to be clear and concise, especially with your house rules and any specific requirement that you have that's different than the norm. Here's what I mean by that. For us, we are in eight, our properties, and as a company, uh, we are listed on other OTAs as an API connection, uh, connected property. Basically what that means is that we have the flexibility and the additional um, privilege, if you want to say that, to allow us to do things outside of the norm. As a result of that though, we need to educate and communicate with our guests with things that are going to be outside of the norm. So for example, it's in our description listing. And even though it's in our listing, we, you, know, you as an operator need to understand most people don't read, right? They're not going to read every detail. But trying to be as clear and concise as to what your requirements are is going to be important. It's going to alleviate some headaches. And the reason I say some headaches is because, again, most people will not read. I'm going to say that again. Most people will not read. So you're going to have issues like, for example, with us, it clearly states that we're going to collect a deposit and that the, the guests, guests, plural, are going to go through a screening process. We vet every person that comes to our property. Uh, and most people are not used to that. So when they book with us and they receive, uh, they'll get that confirmation uh, email, and within that confirmation email, it states that you're going to, uh, you know, we need you to provide the following, right? And it's a list of things that they need to provide, like, like their uh, government issue, government issued ID, a copy of their credit card, a selfie with their credit card, uh, or a combination of those two two things uh, to name each person common. Uh, most people are not doing that, although it's becoming common, it's not common yet. Uh, so when people book with us, sometimes we have some issues because they're not used to that. In addition to that, you're gonna have any additional fees. So, so for example, we have extra cleaning fees for people that come with pets. We accept pets and we don't have a specific pet fee, but what we do is we charge an extra cleaning fee for the pet. Uh, that's in our uh, list in the description, but we still get people that don't read that, don't understand it, and you know, we have issues sometimes. So trying to be as clear and concise about with your house rules is going to be important. Next is, um, the last thing I'm going to talk about here is addressing guest feedback. And this is towards the end, once the guest leaves. Uh, we always encourage our guests to give us an honest review of our property. Uh, what end, ends up happening though is most people, they don't give you an honest re review, they give you opinions of things that are not related to the property. And most of the time that has to do with, uh, with people, and let, and follow my channel, you, you heard me say this before, we live, we today, a lot of people live with an entitlement mentality. Um, what, and what, where we get issues in terms of guest feedback that stand at us is when they make requests, or not requests, let me take that back. They'll make a demand, um, and if we don't fulfill that demand, then they give us a negative review. And those demands sometimes are unreasonable for a short-term rental. Um, uh, those demands oftentimes 
are clearly stated in our listing description that we don't do so. For example, we don't allow unregistered guests on our property. And when we get people that try to sneak in guests or, or, or don't or feel like they don't need to tell us who's coming to the property, it becomes an issue. And then they write us a negative review because they're saying we're over demanding or they'll pick something uh, to retali retaliate against us on those reviews. Now, there is some, some things you can do to remove those those reviews. I did a full video on that, so I'm not going to go that in, go into that in this video. But understand, you have remedies for that for those situations. But sometimes they're difficult to do. Anyway, I hope I answered the question. If I did it, do me a favor, just uh, comment below, and I'll try to readdress it. If you have any additional questions, or you are, uh, any other people have questions, just either ask the questions in the comment below, DM me on any of my social media. Uh, com social medias and I'll try to address them in these weekend reviews. Now let's go right into revenue. Our rental revenue for this week was $63,000, Additional revenue came in at $12,314.63. Our booking source for this week, uh, Airbnb by far. <laughs> Uh, was number one at 68.4 percent. Here's what happens during this time of year. We're going into spring, uh, spring break. A lot of uh, people are, a lot of colleges, a lot of uh, uh, schools uh, were coming into Easter weekend. And Airbnb being the, the juggernaut that it is, oftentimes can over, uh, will, will definitely overtake as a number one book booking platform during this time. Um, so for example, uh, that was their number one. Here's another big jargon now came in number two, which is booking.com. In number three was, we were number three, there were direct bookings at 7.9%. Uh, HomeAway came in, I'm sorry, not HomeAway. Uh, HomeAway didn't even, even get a booking, but Marriott came in at 1%. Challenges and issues for this week. Uh, the biggest challenge for me personally this past week was uh, being here uh, in Georgia in our in our the, in this bed and breakfast that we're trying to build is juggling all the personnel. If you follow my Instagram, you saw uh, you know we have people working on the inside. And let's just talk about the massive amount of people I have working here. We have over 30 people working on this property uh, this past week. We had have, we have our, uh, the people working on our grapes, you know, doing all the pruning. We had the landscapers working on the landscaping. We had the painters working on the painting. We had our carpenters working on some of the uh, uh, projects that we're doing inside. Um, we had our uh, maintenance people working on maintenance issues throughout the property. We had an electrician working on mounting our televisions, uh, running our Wi-Fi, uh, doing all those things. Um, and then we had our, you know, I had to hire someone to come in to not only clean, but also cook for all these people. Um, so um, it's been a crazy week. Uh, so challenging that and still handling and working with my staff on the management side, and then working with our salespeople on the dream vacation side, you know, putting all that together becomes difficult, especially, I've said this before, um, especially when you have people that, that, the, in, that were with me, when I see people, clients, that have been with me from the beginning, and they still feel the need to talk with me directly, um, it's difficult because I'm not, this week I've been disassociated from the phone. I haven't used the phone much. Um, so, you know, in the evening time, when I have time <coughs> to go through my emails and messages, I have tons of th questions and emails from, from clients who are messaging me directly and I just have to remind them, you know, that I have staff for that. And they should be talking to, if it's a management issue, to management, if it's a maintenance issue, to maintenance, you know, 
um, some people, it's just difficult for some people to, to, to do that. That's why if you're starting your own uh, company, regardless of what business you're in, if you're the owner, man, you can't, you can't, you can't work on the business and in the business at the same time. I know in the beginning, most of you have to do that, man, but if you have the ability to hire a person and that let that person be the point person and, and, and you're not really the one interacting with clients, it's, it's so much better in the long run once you grow and you become, uh, um, and, and I don't feel that we're a very big company. I mean, I, you know, we're definitely not, uh, you know, not a, a multi-billion dollar company. Uh, I still feel we're kind of a small mom and pop operation, <coughs> um, you know, because we're under eight figures in this company, and we don't, in terms of staffing, you know, we're still, you know, if you don't, if you take away vendors, you know, staffing, we're still under under 20 uh, uh, full-time staff members, you know, so we're not that big, but yet uh, we're big enough and we have so much going on but it makes it difficult for me to be in all, you know, be in all places and, and for me personally to be involved in all aspects of the business. This is why I rely heavily on my team. This is why it's important for you to have solid team members if you're going to be successful. Anyway, hope this information was useful. If it was, hit that like button. Follow me on Instagram and subscribe to my Instagram channel. I have been putting up a lot of content on my Instagram channel, especially as it relates to this property. I love you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.